fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. During the years when great herds of cattle were driven north to the railroad towns from the southern Texas ranches, the Lone Ranger led the fight for law and order in the range country. Rustlers and hostile Indians attacked the honest ranchers constantly, and it was only through the strength and courage of the masked rider of the plains that peace and security were brought to the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're headed for Tomahawk Basin. Hail, Silver. Hey! On the day Breed Gomez, the Tomahawk foreman, was to be tried, the courtroom in Leadville was crowded. Everyone knew it was the Lone Ranger who had obtained the evidence against him. But so far, Benjamin Steele, who's had said nothing for or against his former employee. Will he stand by him or condemn him? The question remained unanswered when the judge rapped for order. Case of Jim Carey versus Breed Gomez. You got all the witnesses lined up, Sheriff? Your Honor, I object. Who's that? Benjamin Steele. I hold this trial is illegal. What do you mean by that? This, what's the charge? Oh, you ought to know that. Poison in a water hole. And who brought the charge? Why, uh, Jim Carey here. He's got no right to bring charges. The water hole was on my land. If I don't want to bring charges, nobody can. Now, oh, wait a minute there. He poisoned my water hole, too. You just figure he did. You've got no proof. Well, he must have. You got any evidence? No, we caught him at your water hole, but I, I said... it still goes. I'm the only one who can bring charges. Your Honor, you know how all this happened. Uh-huh. Reed was really trying to kill off my cattle. He sent word to me that I could use Steele's water hole. I got that message after he'd poisoned Now, hold on there. Did Breed uh, give you that message himself? It was Ted Bailey brought it, but Breed told him to. Got any proof of that? I got Ted's word. Is that enough, Your Honor? Not unless there was witnesses. Steele's right about the legal part of this case, Carey. He's the only one who's got the right to bring charges. But I want to tell him here and now it's his duty to do it. I got an answer for that. Well, out with it. Breed's worked for me for a long time. He's a good foreman. I need him to run the tomahawk. I'll admit he made a mistake, but most of us do every now and then. Not even the Lone Ranger would stop an honest man from getting a second chance. An honest man? That's what I said. Reed figured you ought to sell your land to me for your own good. You got sort of obstinate about it, and he just figured out this little trick to make you change your mind. It was crooked. It was wrong, I'll admit. But I'll answer for him, for to everybody here in this courtroom and everybody in the tomahawk basin. that he won't try anything like it again. That's why I'm not bringing charges against him. Your Honor, I'm calling on you to throw this case out of court. I object. Well, rightly speaking, there is no case. Objection overruled. Release the president. Court's adjourned. Gracias, senor. You will not be sorry for what you have done today. I know that, Breed. Sure you do. And every small rancher here knows it, too. (laughs) You think you put one over on us, but you haven't. Breed isn't going to jail, Kerry. 
The Lone Ranger didn't accomplish anything by getting him arrested. Oh, yes, he did. He's forced you to put your cards on the table. You can't pretend to be friendly to us anymore. You're trying to drive us all out of the basin. And from now on, it's war. <laughs> It's war. Yes, Tonto. Gary told the truth. Uh, tomahawk outfit plenty strong. Strong as all the other outfits put together. And Steele is smart. Instead of breaking the law, he'll use it. He'll use his money to force the small ranchers into bankruptcy. And he'll try to frame them for rustling and then send them to jail. Him plenty bad. But he won't attack them openly until everything else has been tried. He must make sure his plans fail, Kimosabe. Uh, Afterwards, when he's turned his back on the law, then we'll have a chance to put him where he belongs. And make him pay. For everything. For every head of cattle, for every ranch he's stolen. And most of all, for something we can't prove. You mean Black Arrow? Yes. He'll pay for his treason. <laughs> The thing I like about it is that it's legal. Legal? Yes. <laughs> How are the other ranches coming with the roundups? <laughs> They've just about started. And us? Yeah, it's the same with the tomahawk. We've got to finish first, that's all. You haven't got nearly enough men. Oh, si, senor, we have plenty. That's for what I'm planning. Let Whitey take charge for a few days, and you head down to San Antonio. Hire every man you can find and get back here by the end of the week with a hundred at least. A hundred? At least. And as many more as you can find. He's loco, senor. <laughs> How many men would you need to drive a trail herd of 50,000 to market? Well, we will not have 50,000 here. 5,000 maybe, but 50,000, no. 50,000, yes. Senor. And what's more, they have to get to market before any other cattle from the basin. You'll have to move fast, Breed. Oh, I am beginning to see. If you sell them 50,000 here, the buyers will have enough. <laughs> They will offer little or nothing for the other cattle from the base. I'm hoping it'll be nothing. This will be a bad year for the small ranchers. They won't have enough money to run until next year. They'll have to borrow. And if they can't borrow, they'll have to sell out at my price. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> you will lose some money yourself, of course. 50,000 hit at one time. You cannot hope for a top price. I can afford to lose money to get the land I want. <laughs> See. I congratulate you. Don't bother to do that yet. We've got to move fast if it's going to work. You get down to San Antonio and hire those men pronto. Get up, get up! That's Breed, Tonto. Uh. Steele wouldn't have bothered to get him out of jail if he didn't have some work for him. Not right. It's strange that he should be leaving the basin just when the roundup is getting underway. Um, what do you think, Kimosabe? I don't know. I don't like the looks of it, though. You better follow him, Tonto. Maybe him go a long way. Well, it doesn't matter. Follow him wherever he goes. Follow him until you find out what he's up to. Uh, Tonto do that. And then when you learn anything... Tonto come back plenty fast. Good luck, Kimosabe. Uh, get him up, Scout. One night, a week later, the Lone Ranger reigned up in front of Jim Carrey's ranch house. A great yellow moon was rising above the western hills that rimmed the basin. The distant lowing of the cattle and an occasional whinny from the mustangs in the corral were all that disturbed the silence of the night. The range country seemed at peace. As he climbed the steps of the ranch house, the Lone Ranger's face was grim beneath his mask. Steady, big fella. Good evening, Kerry. Well, I'll be dogged. The Lone Ranger. Come on in. Thank you. Too bad Abby and Ted aren't here. They've gone to a shindig at the bar M. I was afraid you might be there, too. Nope, I had a lot of figures to go over. Roundup time, I hardly ever leave the home range. Then you don't know what's going on over at the Tomahawk. Going on? You mean Steele's up to some funny business again? Just answer me this. How do you split up your herd during the Roundup? Why, three ways, of course. The cows and the calves that are going to be branded, and the ones we're going to drive to market, and the others. The tomahawk crew are only splitting their herd in two, just cutting out the cows and calves. And they aren't doing any branding at all. Only earmarking them, huh? Not even that. They'll have to. Well, they aren't doing it now. It looks to me as if they're getting a trail herd together as fast as they can. Well, what's the sense of it? Carrie, it will be a trail herd such as the West has never seen. You know how many heads steel has. 
Half of them would run the total to nearly 50,000. But they can't drive that many to market. No, not altogether. There's no trail crew can handle more than 5,000. They can split it up 10 ways. But that would mean 10 crews, and Steele doesn't have that many men. He doesn't now, but he may be able to hire them. Well, not around here. Reed rode south last week. He did? And he rode a long way, because Tonto followed him, and he hasn't come back. There are plenty of men in San Antonio. Yeah, but I can't figure it out, though. Why would Steele want to sell 50,000 head? He's got plenty of grass and water. And I doubt if the buyers in Clarksville would... Would what? Fifty thousand. Fifteen dollars a head we're getting now. You're beginning to realize. That's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Why, a drive like that would break the market wide open. How many were you planning to sell this year? A thousand head. And all the others in the basin. Outside of steel, you mean? Yes. Well, altogether, we'll have about six thousand head. Then you've got to beat steel to Clarksville. Or you won't get anything for them. But we hadn't planned on starting yet. Well, you've got to. Now, most of the small ranchers are over at the bar M tonight, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. Then go there. It'll be hard to convince them Steele's up to a trick like that. You aren't sure. That doesn't matter. They'll have to admit there's a chance of my being right. Yeah. And if there is, it means you have to act. I'll talk to them. I'll give it to them straight. We'll get a part of the herd started tomorrow morning. The sooner the better. Uh, someone just rode up. Yes. It's Tonto. You'll have news of Breed. Okay, Miss Harvey. Me follow your trail from camp. You had a long ride, Toto. Ah, uh, and scout plenty tired. What did you find out? Breed go to San Antonio. Him hire many men, maybe hundred. You hear that, Kerry? Them get here by morning. All men wear two guns, many killer. Just the sort of men Breed would hire. Did you hear what he told them? Ah, uh, Toto here. Breed promised them get much money. But are they going to stay at the Tomahawk Ranch? No. To... Them drive big herd to Clarksville. A hundred men, Kerry. Steele has nearly that many working for him already. Do you need any more proof? I sure don't. Can you get all your cattle on the trail tomorrow? We can try. I'll make it to the bar M in a half an hour. And when I get there, the party will be over. Now, listen to me. I haven't finished. You can't be too careful about this. You can't weed out your cattle the way you usually do. We got to move fast. All right. Now, just make up your mind how many heads you want to send. Cut them out tonight and drive them to the flats along Banjo Creek. That's where we start from tomorrow morning. Right, right. Now, don't waste any time and talk. Get into your saddles and head for your home range prado. Come on. Boss, where are you? What's the matter, Jake? They're all to your game. What do you mean? Just what I said. I heard a lot of excitement at the Bar M Ranch. They're having and I heard... a party. They was having a party, but they aren't anymore. I could hear Jim Carrey talking to him. I saw him start riding away. What did he say? Almost word for word what you told the boys yourself. I suppose they've been blabbing it all over the range. Oh, they haven't. It was a lone ranger who figured it out and passed the word along to Carrey. Besides that, the Indian, what's his name, uh, Tonto, he followed Breed to San Antonio. Your new man will be here tomorrow morning. That's fine. It'll be too late. You might as well send them back. Carrie's herd will be on its way. They can start. But I'd like to bet they never get to Clarksville. Huh? Now listen to me. Listen close and get everything straight. Afterwards, you're going to climb aboard that mangy cayuse you call a horse and hightail it for the roundup cap. By sunrise the next morning, the small ranch's herd was taking shape in the flats near Banjo Creek. Hard-riding cowboys hazed the wild longhorns into one great milling mass. Hours passed as they rounded up the strays, and at last the herd was quieted down. Carrie was about to give the word for the drive to begin when the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced up to him. Steady there, Silver. Oh, steady, boy. Oh, hey, we're all set to go. You'll have to wait. What's that? Steel has 3,000 head moving already. They'll reach the pass before you can. Doggone, we'll have to wait until they get through. You can't start your drive until this afternoon. This is going to be bad. One herd in front of us, and Steele's sure to start another moving as soon as he can. It's like being between two fires. Yes, Carrie. It's 400 miles to Clarksville. And there'll be trouble every foot of the way. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When Breed reined up in front of the Tomahawk Ranch House with the men he had hired in San Antonio, he slipped from the saddle and ran up the steps. Senor. Welcome home, Breed. Yeah, I am too late. You think so? It's true. Carrie and the other small rancher, they have the trail her ready to start. We see it near Banjo Creek. Sure, Breed, but we got 3,000 head going through the pass right now. 3,000? It was to be 50,000. Well, don't get excited. We've had to change our plans. The Lone Ranger got wise. Oh, the Lone Ranger. He's smart. You gotta give him credit for that. But I hold all the trumps in this game and I know how to play him. You will explain, please. I do not understand. It won't take me long. Then you and the boys out there can go to work. <laughs> Carey's herd was driven through the pass late that afternoon. The Lone Ranger had been scouting the trail ahead. Carey found him waiting on the far side. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, there. Well, or two. Yes, Carey. Yeah, still light. We can cover, cover a couple of more miles before we have to bed the herd down. You can't go any further tonight. Why not? Because Steele's herd is less than two miles ahead of you. The crew's made camp. Huh? You mean to say they started before daybreak and didn't get any farther than that? They didn't want to get any farther. Didn't want to? Now they're trying to hold you up. You can't go on because if your herd ever got mixed up with theirs, well, it would take you days to separate them. Well, I know, but what good will it do to hold us up? They'll be just holding themselves up, too. There's more to it than that. I've sent Tonto back to the pass. I'm afraid he'll be bringing us some bad news before long. Uh, here he comes now. What kind of news? It's simple, Terry. Steele's going to start another herd as soon as he can. Well, what of it? He can't move any faster than we do. He'll have to keep back a couple miles of that. No, he doesn't. What? He might even stampede this next herd right into yours. Leaping cactus! Oh, 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 oh. What did you find oh. out, Tonto? It's like you think. More cattle on way to pass now. And move plenty fast. They're coming through the pass tonight? Uh -huh. You've got to go on, then. We've got to keep ahead of them. But you can't go on. We've got to do something. And yeah, there's one way out. Name it. Drive your cattle to the east for 20 miles and follow the Merrick to Clarksville. That's twice as long. If we do that, we lose. You want your herd to be stampeded? You want to lose most of them? No, but and I can your only trail and only chance. If you drive 20 miles a day, you can get to Clarksville first. 20 miles a day? If you stay here or try to drive through or around that herd up ahead, you'll never get there. Doggone, I guess you're right. Boys! Yeah. Swing that point to the right. We're heading east for the Merrick Trail. Three nights later, Steele and Breed were camped with one of their trail crews on Spanish Creek. The rancher was in a bad temper. Why hasn't Jake got back yet? I do not know, senor. He has gone since last night. Sneaked off to Litville. Uh, if he has done that, I will beat him off good. I tell him to locate the carry herd and report back at once. Yeah. Pour me another cup of coffee. Uh, see. Uh, it's too bad they slip out of our trap. What did they gain by it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the Merrick Trail is too long. We get to Clarksville first, and that is all you want. Just the same. Just the same what? It's hard to forget the long range arrives with him. He's not a man to be trusted. Uh, give me that coffee. Mm, si, senor. Hello! Uh, that is Jake. It's about time. Oh, 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 Rusty. Oh. Well, where have you been? Just wait till I get my breath, I'll tell you. Why have you taken so long to ride a few miles? A few miles, nothing. I had to ride all the way to the Sweetwater before I caught up with him. Sweetwater? Well, it's not possible. They could not have got that far. They would have to drive 20 miles a day. That's just what they're doing. I never saw a trail herd move so fast. I followed them along the ridge for a while. That masked man was everywhere. You should have seen him. Reed. See? 20 miles a day and they win. Yeah, that is so. You've got to stop them. Tomorrow night, you'll take 20 of the best men you got from San Antonio. Mm, he's clawed up. There may be storm tomorrow night. That ought to help. Just make sure that herd is scattered so they'll never be able to round it up again. See? That isn't all. From now on, we drive 20 miles a day ourselves. I'll pass a word along. The following night, the carrier herd was bedded down north of the Sweetwater. Just before dawn, the Lone Ranger rode up to the dying campfire. Harry was rolled up in his blanket beside it, sound asleep. Steady, big fella. Gary, Gary. Uh, 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 
Oh, hello there. It isn't five o'clock yet, is it? No, I've just been taking a look at the herd. Don't you ever sleep? There can't be much more sleep for any of us tonight. Well, something wrong? Oh, a storm, huh? Yes, it'll break any minute. Cattle are getting restless. Well, I can hear them. You're night riders. What are they shouting for? There's no way to quiet cattle. Gunfire. Steele may have sent some men after us. Here, Silver. Roll out of your blankets, boys. We've got a storm and a parcel of coyotes to deal with. Come on, Silver. Before the lone ranger reached the herd, the gunfire had stopped. In a flash of lightning, he saw a band of horsemen disappearing over the ridge. There was no time to follow them. The cattle were already milling, and at that moment, the storm broke in all its fury. Almost at once, the longhorn started to run before the driving rain. Jagged streaks of lightning cracked toward the earth. Great balls of fire played above the heads of the terror-stricken cattle. On they raced, a stampede. You give the orders, fast man. All we can do is run with them. The storm leaps up. We'll try to turn the leaders. Kino! Come on, Silver! Get up there! Cattle ran for ten miles before the last of the thunder rumbled away in the distance. Then the Lone Ranger directed the cowboys in the desperate work of getting the herd under control once more. Hour after hour of hard riding followed. The sky cleared. The sun rose high in the heavens. It was nearly noon when the last of the strays were rounded up and the herd was started back. Ten miles back to where we left the chuck wagon. We won't get there until dark. Whole day lost. Yes, Kerry. I'd like to lay my hands on the skunks that started the stampede. They're back with their own herd by now. We just can't win, mass man. Kerry, they didn't like you to give up. They know where we are. They know how far we've gone. That means they'll get along a lot faster themselves. Otto. Uh-huh. You and I are riding on to Clarksville. You're leaving us? Yes, Kerry. We'll be back. In the meantime, keep driving as hard as you can. Now, come on, Silver. Come on. Clarksville at last, Kimosabe. Well, we have three hours before dawn. Uh, Are you sure this is John Bennett's house? That's right. Yeah, his door won't be locked. We'll walk right in. There's a lamp on the table. Who's out there? What the? Mask man an inch. You're covered, Bennett. Don't try to call for help. Hey, what's the idea? Get into your clothes. You're leaving town with us. It was over two weeks later that Steele and Breed rode into Clarksville at the head of their first herd. There was no sign of Kerry, and the rancher congratulated himself as he walked along the main street toward John Bennett's office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put it off bravely. Yes, yes, senor. My uh, cattle be pouring into town all this week. When Kerry shows up, he won't get a dime for his tears. Here, this is the place. Uh, senor Bennett will be surprised when you tell him how many heads are on the way here. Uh, Mr. Steele. Hello. Where's your boss? You mean Mr. Bennett? Yeah, where is he? I don't know. Nobody knows. He just disappeared about two weeks ago. Disappeared? Yeah. He left the office one night and went home, and the next day he wasn't anywhere to be found. Sheriff's had a posse looking for him. You must have found some trace. No, he didn't. He didn't say anything to anybody about leaving town, and we haven't had any word. Well, we don't know what happened to him. Well, I got 3,000 cattle down in the corrals. They want to sell them. Well, there's other buyers in town. I can't... They're not big enough to handle this deal. The 3,000 are only a start. Yeah, it's better we go to the sheriff, maybe. If this deal goes wrong at the last minute just because Bennett takes it into his head. To... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, somebody stop our side. It's Mr. Bennett. What kind of a yarn are you trying to make me swallow? I told the truth, but look who's with him. A masked man and an engine. You better get the sheriff. He's the long range. Hello, everybody. What's the meeting of this, Bennett? Where have you been? If you don't mind, Mask Man, I'd like you and town to stick around a little while in case there's any trouble. We'll be glad to. There won't be any trouble. Now, Steele, what can I do for you? Where have you been? Oh, just taking a little business trip. Been to see an old friend of mine. That's a likely story. But here says you've been gone two weeks. Yeah, that's right. Any objections? I, uh, want to talk to you alone. No, thanks. If you've got anything to say, you better get it off your chest right now. All right. I want to sell some kettle. Uh-huh. About 50,000 head, isn't it? The masked man told you. He's told me a lot of things. 
Well, what do you give me for them? Market price, $15 a head. Have you gone local? Nope, $15 a head. I'll only buy $10,000. Now, wait. You'd take the whole 50 if I offered them to you at, uh, let's say, five. Ten thousand's all I can handle. <laughs> I've already bought six. You what? Yeah, from Jim Carey. Rode out with a masked man and met him on the trail. Senor Steele. Well, that's it. I'll break you for this minute. Yeah, and how do you plan to do that? Oh, I'll tell you how. I'll sell all my cattle to the other buyers around here at five dollars. Two, one, I don't care. You'll never be able to get rid of that six thousand. No sale, Steele. I'm talking for all the buyers in town. We'll take 10000 from you and not one There's more. There's a double cross. There's a double, double cross, Breed. Yeah. You're local, Bennett. I'm offering you a chance to make a fortune. You're turning it down. Don Bennett doesn't figure the same way you do, Steele. I've told him that you're trying to ruin every small rancher in Tomahawk Basin. If that happens, he knows he'll have to deal with you alone. Then I'll be the one to get ruined. No thanks, Steele. All us ranchers, and we're going to stick together and play along with the small guys. The market price for beef stays where it is. Well, if we only sell 10,000 head, what we do with other 40,000? You can rent some range land and winter them around here. And when I sold them in the spring, I wouldn't make a cent. Right, Steele. This drive has cost you a lot of money. Let's go, Tano. Uh, so long, masked man. <laughs> I enjoyed the trip. You'll never regret your decision, Bennett. As for you, Steele, we'll see that Jim Carrey's herd gets here safely. And Tano and I are riding back to the basin. We'll meet again. Yes. We'll meet again. And the next time, Breed, I promise you, the tables will be turned. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.